Hello, I'm Chris Godber. This is my art YouTube channel and uh, art and philosophy thinking creativity channel basically. Uh, I wanted to do a video today where I just um, had a stream of consciousness again like usual with a cup of coffee. Now I don't want this channel to be too much of a monologue though. I have, I have a sort of feeling that like a lot of the time I'm just monologuing and no one's actually listening or um, you know, having any thoughts of their own so if you want to leave some comments below I'd like to develop a sort of community around this channel just of basically artists helping each other out, give each other tips constructive criticisms, that sort of thing uh, something I'm really wanting to do so yeah, just leave a comment if you have any uh, obviously constructive criticism uh, criticisms are most welcome on my own work but also uh, other just ideas and art what I want to talk to talk about today was um, selfhood in art so um, how does an artist deal with the idea or the authentic their authentic self or representation of their authentic self and the idea of the self in general in art now also I'm going to talk about how I've done this myself as an artist throughout you know from the age of 22 I've been you know, pretty serious painter I'm 36 now um, so you know I've been at this for quite a long time so I just wanted to yeah, basically relay my thoughts about some artists that I think have informed my like idea of how I represent myself uh, and the development of self um, in my work um, obviously drawing on art history and all that so I think probably most painters can know what this is like because when you first start trying to draw human faces obviously you draw other people's human faces like I, I you know like first I think every boy has the experience of like, you're trying to paint a girl's face like that's just very common experience I think and uh, yeah, like when I was younger, I used to just love doodling faces. Obviously, when you're in primary school, you sort of have. I remember we have like you just have to draw a face, just draw a face. That's like the first exercise that you you know, you're sort of made to do in school, um, which is good because it's sort of uh, obviously when you're a kid, like you you're not really confined by representation. You're just you're just going to make like a sort of abstract version of a face, right? Um, and then, like obviously, like when you know, when I was really a young, like child, like I draw flowers. Like I remember one of the first times I ever got commended for art was I did a watercolor painting of um, you just gathered some flowers in primary school and you know, I painted them, and I got actually got like, a lot of uh, encouragement from my art teacher. I can't remember her name, and this is when I was like eight or something. So. Uh, I guess that's fairly typical, but then when I was like uh, a teenager, when I started doing my art, I was more like comic books, really, sort of pop culture. I was very much into the geek culture, the horror films, old 80s horror films, like looking out for all that stuff. So if I ever, well, I was mostly a doodler, and I've talked about this before actually in the big talk I did in London a while ago, a Sal Noir. I was just a compulsive doodler. So, um, that's, I guess that's also pretty common for teenagers. Like you, you, you doodle. You're doing like sort of like it's representational and it's better than when you're a child. But it's obviously like quite fantastical. Uh, sometimes I'd even draw like quite disturbing things. I probably got pulled up a few times for that. I think in school. Uh, yeah, I did actually. I remember. Like I, I just like we had like a uh, journals, and. I'd just like be doing loads of really edgy jokes in my journals, but our journals would be inspected by a teacher sometimes. So there was one time where I think I'd done something about, I don't know, I'd written something like just taking the mickey out of Hitler basically. Because I, I mean, British people, just in general, like Hitler for us is just a figure of mockery because we, we think he's so ridiculous. He's just like a comical figure for us because I think obviously because, you know, as an adult, I can understand why it's because. He almost um, wiped us off the map, and you know, most of the enlightened like, Western civilization was almost not, you know, wiped out. Not to mention, you know, what happened um, 
so it's just a you know it's a oppressive amount of darkness. So British people in general, anyone who hates fucking Nazis, basically just can take has full carte blanche to take the Mickey out of Hitler. Uh, obviously Jews especially. So, but anyway, I'm not gonna. No, Mel Brooks is great for that. But anyway, basically, um, yeah, like so. If, I just doodle a lot. I uh, don't want to write a little bit too much on that, but yeah. Uh, um, so yeah, just like just draw loads and they're quite comical when I got to about 17 they started to become a bit more absurd and surreal surrealism became more of an influence for sure uh, and that's where I really started to try and properly actually do figurative drawing so uh, I did have a few subjects that I worked from at first obviously uh, obviously I was working on when I didn't have anyone else to draw I'd just draw myself uh, I had a good friend uh, Amanda who used to just draw from imagination now I just spent time with her and then just drew uh, drew drawings of her from my imagination and then did paintings from my imagination so I didn't actually have her to sit for me I just got to know her basically and then drew uh, her basically how I saw her as a human being like her personality obviously her face as well but just like uh, probably some of these drawings are somewhere some of them were quite good actually and she was like sort of we look you know, we you know, used to take photos of each, photographs of each other and everything and just go for walks down the canal and everything. Uh, this is a platonic friendship, but yeah, like it was, um, there was, there was definitely a, like a, we were both artistic and she was like my first friend, like female friend who was like artistic. So there's quite an important, um, time of development of that, like, you know, just basically drawing on subject matter from real life as it were anyway fast forward a bit um, uh, I fast forward to now really so my uh, how I portray myself or how I see myself in relation to others now as an artist is uh, I draw on the fantastical so I try and paint um, myself in like you know the real just like how I look like you know, very literal. Also, sometimes uh, I can take on a surreal aspect. So, there's a recent self-portrait I did, where I almost look like um, almost like a wizard sort of thing, and like a fantasy landscape. Fantasy, like, um, is more in. Uh, like, I'm not, I'm not like a comic book artist per se, but um, I'm, I'm, I don't have any problem with acknowledging that I was very, I've been very inspired by the artworks of surrealism and fantasy worlds and fantasy sci-fi and everything else. A lot of that imagery comes into my work. Um, uh, but yeah, the portrait is, has been a yeah, staple of a lot of my work over the last uh, well, many years really. But like I said, it basically veers between a very, like trying to get a very um, realistic, rendered, um, of the person and what they exude, you know, they're sort of because I'm, I'm primarily an expressionist when it comes to, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not a painter who is going to dilly daddle, daddle for ages over a tiny detail. I'm a painter of uh, a ballsy painter in some respects. Like I, 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 I make big shots. Sometimes they miss. Sometimes they hit. That's the sort of painter I am, really. Um, I. You know, sometimes I'm a, I, I, I'm a experimental painter a lot, so uh, I veer a lot between figuration and abstraction. That's certainly something. And in terms of actual representations of myself, it's the same thing. Like I, I either paint myself abstracted, like extremely, incredibly abstracted. Like a lot of my self portraits are like warped versions of me, almost like dysmorphic in some respects. Uh, I've often wondered if, if this means I have a dysmorphic view of myself. I do have insecurities, obviously. So some of the uh, some of the ways I portray myself, I think, in my paintings are a representation of my body image, right? Because um, the main thing I struggle with body image-wise is I'm, uh, you know, I'm a broad-shouldered big guy. I'm a tall man with a, basically a dad bod, really. So I have a big belly. Um, so I'm quite large, like I'm a large man, like I'm just, uh, and sometimes, and I think there was a there was a difficult transition I had between the ages of 17 and 18 because I got ill when I was 17. I had like a very, uh, I guess it is, a mental health episode, 
Uh, and as well, as a result of that, I had to take immune stabilizing medication. And that did lead to me putting on a lot, quite a lot of weight over the period of two years. Now, I'm completely fine with the weight I am now. It's, I'm, you know, I'm just a chunky, fit guy, really, basically. But uh, when it first happened, it was quite a trauma for me, really. And it really did knock my confidence quite badly. Um, so I think, like, some of the um, ways that I was trying to deal with that was, was like, the morphing in my work in some respects. Like, the... I almost projected that a morph I felt inside of myself, like my body shape into my into my perception of nature, as it were. Um, I guess this might have been somewhat inspired by. I mean, one of my big first art crushes, if you will, <laughs> was Kandinsky. Uh, and like, there's something very naive in, about Kandinsky's work in a lot of ways. It's line, fuck, shape, color, form. And obviously when I started painting, it was a very tentative start. I didn't really know what I was doing. Right? I was not a self-taught painter. I just taught myself and went to various art workshops and mixed with artists, but I'm not I'm not, I'm not academically trained painter. Right? I'm like a self-taught painter. I'm not, I didn't have anybody telling me any techniques. I had to teach myself and just pick up what I could pick up from other painters. And I've been I've been blessed in the sense that I've been I've got myself involved in various studio projects and art collectives over the years, which is something I'd recommend just every artist does basically. Uh, at the end of the day, like if you want to just keep on doing art, then you have to keep on doing it, and you have to be around like-minded people. Uh, don't get too disappointed, I'd say, if you're not making lots of money because that's just being an artist. Like at the minute, I'm surviving, but I'm quite skint. But I think, in a lot of ways, artists work on a sort of different economy to most the rest of the world, if that makes sense. So, uh, you know, like I, like I live with a friend at the minute, but uh, we're friends, so he's not going to he's not going to mind if if you know if I instantly can't um, produce lots of money for him if if we need I don't know if say we need something fixed in the house. He just knows that because we are friends, there's a uh, there's trust there, mutual respect, and even if I can't pay monetarily, um, I will do favors. I will, you know, basically just sort of be a good person and just help him out however way, however way I can. And also with knowledge, sharing, or blah 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 blah. So that uh, obviously that's quite a big part of how I am. I try and represent that in my art. Like I'm, I'm not kind to a to my detriment, but I. You know, I do my best to be good to other people. I just think that's a good thing. It's, it's just, I mean, it's like karma, isn't it? Like, if, if you're, what you radiate out to others will come back to you, basically, I think, in a lot of respects. If you're, if you try, and you know, we're not perfect. Like, I've made mistakes in my life. I've, I think I've, often actually, when I've, um, I've done some depictions of my own self, which have been, um, somewhat disturbing or angst angst ridden in a lot of ways and that's probably when I was it's usually when I was dealing with something that I've just realised like I've done something wrong or I've misbehaved or I've accidentally uh, hurt somebody or you know like emotionally basically um, through not really much fault of my own but just a lack of awareness I think in some respects of this can be a thing actually like I think because if, you, if you're an artist I think you can be quite driven and you really just want to, like, if you are truly a driven painter, you will, like, everybody will try and dissuade you, and nothing will stop you, and you just can't stop doing it. It's like an obsession. It's a healthy obsession. It's like having a good addiction, right? It's like being addicted to cigarettes, and then, but actually good for you. It's a better addiction than that, obviously. Um, so, yeah. Um, I've actually I've done quite a few paintings of me smoking. Uh, often I have done them as a sort of like trying to make myself give up but I mean it's never worked so far I still smoke somewhat uh, I'm not like dead heavy smoker but yeah I smoke uh, but I have yeah cigarettes and cigarettes and art culture in a lot of ways have gone together for a long time I think it's probably because there's something seen as uh, traditional anyway not so much these days but they've seen as quite um, taboo in some respects you know like it's, it's there's a drug at the end of the day so I guess it seems as quite taboo, but it, I mean it isn't really. I mean realistically, the actual reality of cigarettes is the more I smoke, the more my health 
uh, potentially we're going to decline in the future, so you know, so I'm trying to stop, but I haven't managed to yet. Anyway, I think that's probably enough. Um, a little bit of a long form from the heart ramble about, um, yeah, just like how I've tried, how I've dealt with my own selfhood, like I guess self actualization and uh, perception of my own self in my own artwork. You know, I guess everyone would be different, so I'd be interested in hearing how do you uh, deal with the concept of selfhood, how do you represent yourself, how do you represent others in your life, it might be important, how do you how do you do that, how do you go about that, just have to discuss below, uh, like and subscribe obviously, I mean I've got all sorts of videos on here, mostly art based recently, uh, I've got a show, I've got two shows coming up in March in London, I've got Silent Savages, on the sixth, the private views on the sixteenth. It's in Hoxton, London, it's East London. So that, that's my solo show. No, that painting will be in that. That's a few paintings will be in that. That is coming up um, next month. I'm going to be down in London actually in March. Uh, there's also the We Show at the uh, Asylum Chapel in Peckham. So yeah, I'm, I'm going down East London, baby. <laughs> and we're, yeah, I'm going to be just down East East London, just doing art exhibitions for the month of March because, yeah, we've got a solo show and a group show at the same time, which is the first time that's happened for, I think, ever, actually. Look, I've had solo shows on before. I had one in uh, 100 Years Gallery a few years ago. I had one in New Format Gallery. I also had a solo show in up north as well a few times. It's, I think it's my fourth or fifth solo show. Um, obviously, it'd be good if you can, if anyone watching this wants to come, feel free. It's going to be there's a bar at the Hundred Years Gallery. It's a, it's a really bohemian, interesting cafe and art gallery. So it's the downstairs art gallery that the show will be on. And Wii's going to be amazing as well because those tunnel shows where we um, have tunnel, uh, it's almost like our spiritual home, the asylum cha chapel at this point. Um, not just because we're all lunatics, <laughs> but we are a bit more artists. But uh, yeah, that should be interesting. It's based on Evgeny Sam Samyatin's novel Wii. Which I'm almost finished now. I'm finished that off, obviously. Uh, it's a sort of dystopian novel from a Russian author, early 20s. Um, yeah. Anyway, that'll do.